Join I Am A Watchman Ministries Managing Editor Joe Kerr with co-host Dylan Burroughs, bringing you a fascinating discussion regarding the importance of Bible prophecy and Christian living today as it relates to our responsibility as believers to be watchmen. This is A View From The Wall. Welcome to A View From The Wall. I'm Dylan Burroughs here again with co-host Joe Kerr, and our story today is a fascinating one. In 2005, Israel's most venerated Orthodox rabbi, Yitzhak Kaduri, claimed he had met the true Messiah in a vision. He wrote the name in an encoded message and instructed his ministry officials to post it on his website one year after his death. When Kaduri died in January 2006 at the age of 108, over 300,000 people attended his funeral in Jerusalem. Even the president of Israel gave the eulogy. And in January 2007, the note was posted. Just a few weeks later, the note was decoded, and indeed, the note revealed the name of the Messiah, just as Kaduri had promised. That name was, are you ready for it? Yeshua, or Jesus. The world was rocked by this news, and Kaduri's revelation continues to connect to current prophetic events across today's headlines. Well, today we are joined by Carl Gallups, co-author of the recent book, The Rabbi, The Secret Message, and the Identity of the Messiah. We are honored to have Carl with us today. Carl, welcome to A View from the Wall. Dylan, Joe, thank you guys for having me. It's my honor to be with you. Well, thank you. And Carl, today we want to start off just by addressing the title itself, The Rabbi, The Secret Message, and the Identity of the Messiah. Introduce us to what this story is all about. What is this secret message that we are proclaiming here in this book today? Okay, well, thanks. Yeah, first, Rabbi Kaduri, the most venerated rabbi in all of Israel's history. I mean, he's like the Billy Graham of the Orthodox yes. Jews, if, if, you, if you will, in, in that his face is still recognized. But the thing is, the fake news and the deep state of Israel, uh, literally, and we talk about this in the book, they have desperately tried to cover this story up because it did, it does still continues to rock the world for people that know. So the secret message, it, what it was, the, very quickly, and they, your audience can uncover all the details in the book, uh, and Zephyrat lives in Israel, born in Israel, raised in a rabbinic family. He's connected to the Kaduri family. He's connected to the Israeli government, so he knows, and he and I have been together in ministry for six years, so we know what we're talking about. The secret message was that he wrote in his own handwriting a note wherein he promised his synagogue congregation and many of his students in his yeshiva, his rabbinical training school that he uh, was in charge of, that he had met Messiah. Uh, personally, in a vision. Sim- I, I'm going to say, he didn't say this, but similar to like Apostle Paul. I mean, you know, right. he was a rabbi. He was a Pharisee and on his way to kill Christians, hated Christians. But in the midst of all of that, the risen Messiah appeared to him. Kaduri says, I have met Messiah. I know who he is. I know his name. I'm going to write it down in a note and put it, I want it put on my website after I'm dead. Well, the note was written down. It was given to the ministry officials. It was secreted away. It was posted on his website, but only because he had written it in a coded fashion. At its surface level, it looked like an innocent little rabbinical orthodox statement about the office of Messiah. But the instructions for the coding were right there in the note. And once people saw it, especially his students, because 13 of them are believers in Yeshua as a result of Kaduri secretly teaching them in the yeshiva. But when they saw it, they decoded it, put it on the Internet, and the world went crazy. His ministry officials took it down. They, they destroyed the note. All of this is in my book, the details of how it was destroyed, who it was destroyed, why it was destroyed, where it was destroyed. It's all there and because they were so furious about it. Then they began to say, it's a fake, it's a trick. Somebody broke into our website. Uh, the, the Christians did it because the note said Yehoshua, which is the, the long form, old fashioned, but it's used in the Old Testament way of saying Yeshua, which means salvation in Hebrew, but it is also the name of the world's only Messiah declared by the largest faith system in the world, Christianity, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. The story of how Kaduri revealed the name of Messiah is a, a whole tale on its own. It's a good section of the book. Yeah. Talk about how he revealed that in the note, because he didn't just write in the note, Jesus is the Messiah. We're yeah, done. That's right. No, here's what it said. In Hebrew, it was in his own handwriting, but in Hebrew, 
it said this, concerning the letter abbreviation of his name, and I'm going to put comma, there wasn't a comma, but it's the way he wrote it in, in lines, you could, that's how he split it up. Concerning the letter abbreviation of his name, he shall lift his people and prove that the word and the law are valid. That's it. Now, when you look at it, you think, well, gosh, he didn't leave the name of Messiah. He got us all worked up. He promised he would leave his name. But wait, but wait. And by the way, that note was up there for weeks before it was finally decoded. And that was brilliant on the part of God <laughs> and, <laughs> and Kaduri and his students who patiently waited a few weeks before they revealed to the world what it said. Because, because that way, there's no denying it. Screenshots. I've got a screenshot of it in my book. You know, they can't, they can't say, well, nobody has a note, so, so you can't see it. But the bottom line is, the, the name of Messiah wasn't there. But the instructions for encoding it were in the first sentence, concerning the letter abbreviation of his name. That's a Hebrew way of saying, concerning the acrostic that is his name. You know, Psalm 118 is an acrostic. Many psalms are acrostics. So part, of, part of other scriptures are written in acrostic form. The first letter of, of each section of the Hebrew alphabet begins that section. So when they saw that, concerning the acrostic of his name is how we would say it. He shall lift his people and prove the word and law are valid. When you take the first letter of each of those six Hebrew words, that's a lot of words in English, but in, in, in Hebrew it's just six words. It spells Yehoshua. So in other words, it's like concerning the acrostic of the spelling of his name, his name is Yeshua. This is such a life-changing book and one we're excited to tell. So uh, we're going to take a quick break, Carl, and we'll be right back with more on this powerful account here on A View from the Wall. From I Am A Watchman Ministries, here's today's I Am A Watchman Minute. Friends in Christ, let me share a Bible verse that can change your life. It's James 4.2, you have not, for you ask not. Many tend to think that because God knows all things, there's not a need to voice our prayers. That's just not true. The biblical mandate is clear. We are to ask and seek and knock and pray and not give up. In the next verse, James 4.3, we are instructed to pray with the right heart and motive and for the right things. So verses 2 and 3 present the key to a powerful prayer life. We are to ask and pray with precision and passion and with the right heart and motive. Yes, there is power in prayer. Be quick to voice your praises and prayers to the Lord. Be bold. Be faithful. Be a watchman. I am a watchman.com. Welcome back to A View from the Wall. Joe and I have enjoyed preparing for this interview with Carl on his book, The Rabbi, The Secret Message and the Identity of the Messiah. It has such a powerful story and one that's not just yours, but you also have a co-author, the Rabbi Zev Parat. He's an important part as well. So take a moment. I know he couldn't be with us today, but share a little bit about Zev and your connection and collaborating together on the story. Yes, absolutely. Zev would have been with us today, but he had a very important funeral at the last moment. So I know you guys will be able to have him later. Yeah, Zev Parat is a Messianic rabbi, born and raised in Israel, lives in Tel Aviv. Most of your audience knows, but Messianic rabbi means he is a teacher, preacher, rabbi uh, of the Jewish faith. Uh, originally, who has who is now a believer in Yeshua Hamashiach, and that's Hebrew for Jesus the Christ, Jesus Messiah. So uh, he, the, his whole testimony is in my book. The chapters, by the way, are just five pages each. It's easy to read. So his testimony makes up about six chapters, but it's just riveting. And I'll tell it very quickly. Uh, the first thing is when I wrote the first book, I had seen Zev on the internet um, witnessing to some of Kaduri's students who were professing to be believers. In Yeshua because of what Kaduri was secretly teaching them before Kaduri died. And I mean, that was astounding, a piece of evidence. So I included right. all that in my book. Um, and, and, and the videos are still up on the internet, and we still have copies of those in case they're ever taken down. But the bottom line is, I just put him in my book. Well, through a supernatural chain of events, my book was taken into Israel in a totally unexpected way. The person that took the book into Israel looked up Zev Perat. He didn't know him. I didn't know Zev either. I just knew of him. Um, I found him eventually. It took him days. 
Zev finally agreed to meet with him. Zev was a little, uh, you know, curious and a little hesitant to meet some guy from America that he didn't know, talking about some book Zev had never heard of. But Zev finally did meet with him. The guy presented the book to Zev, showed him where he was in it. Zev and his wife, jaw hit the table. They met at a restaurant because they had been praying that this story would be put in writing because Zev is connected to the Kaduri family. He knew what happened in Kaduri's life, but when he was out in the streets trying to tell it to fellow Jews, they mocked him. Everybody denied it. The news was denying it. The Orthodox rabbis were denying it, and he couldn't get the story across. Nobody would believe him. So he and his wife had been praying, God, please put let somebody put this in a book at, in evidence. And, and you know, and Zeb said he started to do it himself, but he just felt like he was so close to it and related and connected to the family that if he did, it would appear to be self-serving. So he just started praying. Well, the bottom line is, here's this book handed to him, written by a Gentile Baptist pastor on the Gulf Coast on the other side (laughs) of the world. And he freaked out. He said, I can't can't believe this is answered a prayer, but what in the world? Well, the bottom line is, after he read it, realized it was powerful, he already used it in a couple of witnessing conversations. It rocked his world when he saw how powerful it was. He finally found me, got my phone number, called me up, said, man, I'm in your book. This is amazing. Let's talk. So we did. We became friends over the phone. Uh, We said, we really believe somehow God's going to have us in ministry. We don't together. We don't know how. Well, that was six, six and a half years ago. In the meantime, we've been all over the world together. We've been in and out of conferences, in and out of churches, on all kinds of national, international television shows, radio shows. Um, I was in Israel with him just a few days ago, and well, a couple of weeks ago, for 10 days. Then he came over here. We were together another 10, 12 days in, in the United States, traveling around doing media, preaching and teaching, doing conferences. We both have three or four more conferences this year. So this is a powerful, powerful connection that God has put us in. He comes from a family. His dad was a rabbi. His grandfather was a rabbi. His great grandfather was a rabbi, and he trained to be a Sanhedrin rabbi. He was raised in B'nai Barak, Israel, which is a rabbinical little village town. Um, I mean, that's all that lives there are Orthodox rabbis and their families. That's what he was raised in. I mean, steeped in Jewish tradition. Yet in the midst of his preparing to go into the rabbinical uh, field, um, and after graduating from Sanhedrin Rabbi School, he found Yeshua's Messiah. Now that was a three or four or five year process, and all that's told in the book. I'm keeping it short and simple here, but he is an on fire, dynamite, powerful speaker, preacher, teacher, uh, connecting biblical Hebrew foundations to the Christian faith and testifying that Jesus is in fact Lord and Savior. So that's who he is, and together we are in this ministry. And and it kind of, you know, the rabbi story brought us together, but we teach and preach the word from Genesis to Revelation. We're not just strictly revolved around this rabbi story, but this story is huge. It's still leading people to the Lord all over the world, and it's what brought Zev and I together. Part of the Kaduri story is found in the Hebrew names of God, and you discuss this, Pastor Carl, in the book several places. And of course, Zev, speaking Hebrew, that is an area that he's an expert on as well. But part of the story is wrapped up in the Hebrew names of God. I love in the book where you discuss the connection between the name of Jesus and the word our English Bibles translate as salvation. Explain that connection and, and the revelation that contains. Okay, yeah, I'll do that very quickly. And again, I urge your listeners to get the book because there's four or five chapters on several of the names of God and how it's deeply, deeply connected to the Hebrew alphabet, ancient Hebrew history, the scriptures themselves, and the Orthodox Jews know it which they have even tried to change their teaching of the alphabet because of this. And all of this is documented in the book from mainstream Hebrew newspaper sources that don't even understand what they're doing in, in, in boosting our case here, as well as Zev and the fact that he speaks Hebrew as his mother tongue. But the bottom line is, yeah, the name Yehoshua or Yeshua means uh, salvation. That's what it means. Yehoshua was a long form. It means salvation is from the Lord, or salvation has been delivered through God himself. But, but, but Yehoshua and Yeshua are used interchangeably and synonymously in the scriptures and in the Hebrew language. And again, we prove this in the book from Hebrew uh, experts as well as Zev, who speaks it daily. Uh, so when, when you look at the name Jesus, that's why in the, in the first chapter of Matthew, we run right into the angel telling Mary, you shall name the child Jesus because he 
will save his people from their sins. Well, that's the English, Jesus. That comes from the Latinized Greek, but in the Hebrew, it's Yeshua. You shall name him Yeshua because he is salvation to his people, salvation. Now, when you understand that, every time you look in the Hebrew Bible and you see the word salvation in the English Bible, but in the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, it says Yeshua. So in the Psalms, where it would say something like, God is my Yeshua, you know, God is my salvation, it really says God is my Jesus. Or where it says, salvation is from the Lord, my God, it says, Jesus is from the Lord, my God. Um, Salvation shall come to you riding on a donkey, lowly, Zechariah. Uh, it says, Jesus, Jesus shall come to you riding on a donkey, lowly, and, and you know, uh, the Prince of Peace, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I could go on and on all through the Scripture. Psalms is full of them, but it's in Isaiah and other places. Just astounding. If you just take the word salvation and substitute the name Jesus, because that's what it is. It's, this is not a stretch. It is Yeshua. But you say, well, how come the Hebrew people don't see this? Because they don't read the scriptures, just like a lot of Christians. In fact, they are forbidden in some cases and uh, restricted in others by their rabbis from reading. They're, they're told, come to the synagogues, let us interpret it for you. Most Jews never lay their eyes upon those words. Well, you've been listening to Carl Gallops, the co-author of The Rabbi, The Secret Message, and The Identity of the Messiah. Stay with us. We'll be right back for one more segment on A View from the Wall. Watchman Ministry believes the rapture can happen at any time. Are your friends and loved ones spiritually prepared for the coming of the Lord? What will happen to those left behind? Because we're concerned, we've created a new resource called a Rapture Kit. Rapture Kits are designed to help believers reach out to those lost before the rapture and provide spiritual and practical information for those not taken in the rapture. Rapture kits include a wealth of video and printed resources. Resources that explain what the rapture is, how to come to faith, how to share your faith, and resources to aid in understanding Bible prophecy, the events associated with the tribulation period, and how to live for the Lord. Please visit the rapturekit.org website for more information on this incredible new resource. God bless. Welcome back to A View from the Wall. This is Dylan Burroughs here with Joe Kerr. And before we continue on in our last segment, we want to say a quick thank you to our listeners on 88.1 in Minneapolis, Minnesota at Real Life Radio. You can hear us Mondays at 8.07 a.m. local time, as well as our Watchman Minute every afternoon at 1.07 p.m. We'd encourage you to drop us a message and let us know you're listening with us there at IamAWatchman.com. Again, that's IamAWatchman.com. Thanks again for those of you in Minneapolis joining us today. And now as we continue in our final segment with Carl Gallup, so we want to address a special aspect of your book for our listeners. We've mentioned the Apostle Paul and Kaduri's vision Uh, regarding the revelation being similar to that. So in our next question, share for a moment how you would explain Jesus as the identity of the Messiah for someone who may still be seeking today, whether they're a Jew or not. Yeah, well, listen, now, first of all, I mean, I I have done that quite often, and so I'd be glad to share my insight. But this is what Zev's whole ministry is founded upon. So when you have him on, he can give much deeper insight, because, I mean, he knows the entire foundation of Hebrew tradition, Hebrew mindset, the way that uh, most Jewish people think and study, and the way their mind uh, connects to the Scriptures. Let me just say this. The reason this story, the rabbi story, is so hugely profound in witnessing to a Jew, and there are many ways to witness to Jews, several ways that are effective, but the reason why we have found using this book, and especially when Zev uses it because he's one of them, is because what a lot of people in in America or the Western church don't understand, they think you can just walk up to a Jew in the street and say, let me show you Isaiah 53. 
Let me show you Psalm 22. Let me show you Zechariah 12. You know, these passages that speak of, you know, he's pierced for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. They've pierced my hands and my feet. They gamble for clothing under my feet. Uh, You will look upon him who is pierced, but you will mourn for him as an only son. And these scriptures, you say, well, why can't they see it? Well, it's because, again, they don't read it or they're never told about it. In fact, Isaiah 53 is actually called the forbidden chapter. And I have four or five chapters in this book where Zev talks about it. And uh, another Messianic rabbi friend of mine contributed. And, and so your folks will understand. But here's the deal. The Jewish person, the average Jewish person, especially if they're Orthodox, but even if they're traditional, you know, relatively secular, but yet they're traditional Jews, they – hang their hat on what their rabbi tells them. Now, for somebody listening right now saying, well, that's stupid. Well, Christians do that with their pastors. You know, somebody will say, you know, somebody say, hey, tell me, brother, how can I have what you have? How can I give my life to Jesus? And they'll say, well, let me go get my pastor. He'll tell you. That's right. (laughs) You know, yeah. Or what do you believe about, uh, you know, the end times? Well, now my pastor says, so Jews are the same way. Except even more so. I mean, the, the, the rabbi is like the pope to a Catholic. I mean, it's just, you know, the final word. When a rabbi speaks, and if you're connected to a certain rabbinical uh, denomination of the Orthodox Jews, that's the voice. But here's the deal, guys. Rabbi Kaduri was like the Billy Graham of the Jews in that he transcended all the denominations of orthodoxy. And yes, Jewish orthodoxy has denominations in it, just like Christians. And and they have a little different views, and some don't cross over, you know, from one denomination to another. But Kaduri did. Kaduri, this is why he's the most venerated. 350,000 people came to his funeral. The president of Israel gave the eulogy. They had to shut the streets of Jerusalem down for two days, if that tells you anything about this guy. I mean, uh, the prime ministers were attached to him. Benjamin Netanyahu won his first election to prime minister because of Kaduri. The newspaper said that. Benjamin Netanyahu said that. So this guy was huge. So when you are showing a Jewish person, did you know that your most famous rabbi said that Jesus is Messiah? He had a vision. Their jaw hits the ground. Sometimes they'll get mad and call you a liar and just walk off. Other times they'll, they'll want to fight because they're saying, I, I can't believe you would trash his name like that. But then you say, wait, wait, wait. He put it in a note. So it's in his own handwriting. You won't see the note. And you show them the note and you show them the code and they see it. Let me just tell you this. Pat Boone, who has become a dear friend of mine, the singer, entertainer, he is also a friend of Benjamin Netanyahu. When my first book came out, Pat took it to Benjamin Netanyahu's office, showed him the note, showed him the circled letters. He didn't tell him anything about the story. He just said, Kaduri was your friend, right? He said, oh, yes. He said, did you see his note that he left when he died? He said, well, I've heard about it. He said, do you want to see it? He said, yes. Yeah. So he opened the book. He showed him the note. Benjamin Netanyahu looked at it, and these were his words. He goes, huh, Jesus. (laughs) So he saw it immediately. So what happens then, there's a crisis of belief in a Hebrew person's life then. They have to, did their Billy Graham lie, or did he really meet Messiah, and is his name really Jesus? And so this is why this is such a powerful tool. Um, But listen, I say to your audience that they don't have the book, they don't speak Hebrew, they wouldn't know all of this, they really don't know how. The best thing to do is to develop a loving, friendly relationship with your Jewish friends or acquaintances, and then just keep praying and praying that the Lord will open doors. Study study this book. Get this book and read it, because we're just scratching the surface on, on the different ways you can use. And Zev and I actually teach in the book different ways that you can use different scriptures and ease into conversations so that the light bulb comes on in their head and they see Jesus in the scriptures. Because the bottom line is, guys, most Jews are like most Christians. They don't know the scriptures in context, or they've never read certain passages. Some of them have never seen any passages. They just, whatever their rabbi says, is their religious belief. It's a shame, but it happens in the Christian world, too. I hope that helps in this little bit of time. Again, get the book, folks, and you'll see tons and tons of ways that you can witness to your Jewish friends. Definitely get the book. I am reading it for the second time already. It is deep, but 
easy to understand. It's so well done. Well, you know, Pastor Carl, as you've been on the program before, we like to end each program with a word of encouragement and challenge to watchmen everywhere. This program is a little unique. So for those watchmen who are listening to the program and really have a heart for Israel, how can they help bring the gospel to the Jewish people? Yeah, thank you. Well, again, there are ways that you can do that. Uh, I mean, I mean, let me just say this. This sounds a little self-serving, but this is from my heart. First of all, Zev Peratt's ministry. Um, it's called Messiah of Israel Ministries dot com. Messiah of Israel Ministries. You can donate there. It's all used for getting materials. He's got training centers, discipleship centers. He's got secret discipleship rooms. He has rabbis coming to him secretly, sitting down, wanting to know more about Yeshua and the Scriptures. Zev says that there are many thousands of Jews in Israel who are believers in Yeshua who are not yet saying it publicly because the persecution is horrendous if you are a Jewish person and living in Israel and then become a Christian or a believer in Yeshua. So they can give to his ministry and that makes your buck go a long way. Another thing, you can get some of these books into Israel, into Zev's ministry. He does not sell them. If you get them to him, he gives them away. He puts them into the hands of Jewish people. Um, those are two huge ways. Uh, continually pray for the salvation of Israel. This is prophetic stuff, Dylan and Joe. This is prophetic. This is Romans 11. This is the fullness of the Gentiles provoking the Jews to jealousy. And those are harsh words, but what the Bible, the context means is it's, it's showing the Jews in these last days that they have have missed the most important element of all of eternity, that Yeshua is in fact Messiah, and now their greatest rabbi has declared the same thing. And so this is stuff that the Bible speaks of that is prophetic. We're living in the most prophetic time since the first coming of Jesus Christ. The fact that there is a geographical Israel back in the land, and that Jerusalem is now the official capital, and the Golan Heights officially belongs to them, and on and on. They're surrounded by uh, the enemies of the world, Russia's in the Middle East, China's in in the Middle East, Syria has collapsed into a into an irreconcilable civil war. Turkey is collapsing into a Muslim caliphate. North Korea and Iran are on the war path. I mean, you know, borders are collapsing in Western nations around the world. We are living in prophetic times, and the salvation of Jews is hugely prophetic and important. And Zev's ministry is right dab central in the middle of it, and this book is too. Not just in Israel, but all over the world. Well, Carl, we want to thank you for being with us today. Such an exciting account and one that we want to share more uh, with you who are listening today and your friends. Uh, we want to, of course, mention our own bookstore as well. If you go to IamAWatchman.com where you can pick up a copy of this book or you can find out more about this broadcast and how to share it with your friends. We do want to encourage you to connect with us there at IamAWatchman.com and find additional resources to help you spiritually and join us on social media. You can share your prayer needs or how God is working in your life through our ministry. And we invite you to join us next time here on a a view from the Wall. A View from the Wall, in association with I Am a Watchman Ministries, exists to equip a worldwide audience with biblical truth, sharing it with others, and being prepared for Christ's imminent return. The team seeks to encourage, inspire, and equip watchmen for such a time as this. For information about the ministry and upcoming events, visit IamAWatchman.com. A View from the Wall is made possible by the team of dedicated pastors, editors, and the many contributors of I Am A Watchman Ministries. To support our efforts, give online at IamAWatchman.com and click on the Donate button. Thanks for listening, and join us again next time on A View from the Wall.